Jesus Christ's goal is to give you life and abundantly, to give you joy, to give you peace, to cover you with his love and his concern because he cares deeply, he loves you. And he's keeping an eye on you because he knows how we sheep are. We can sometimes, because we are sheep, and we're, you know, sheep's are really stupid. And they can stray off the path. And Jesus Christ brings them back to the flock. And you're going to sometimes stray off the path, but Jesus Christ will always bring you back to the path. You'll get stuck in the thickets or something or the bushes and then Jesus Christ's voice will speak out and you as a sheep will recognize his voice. Oh, there he is. And come back. And find their direct, find, it's, find the sheep will find his direction again. The sheep will find his or her direction again. And on the other hand, the Kenites, they want to destroy you. They want to mess you up. They want to mess you up. Because their goal is self-interest. They come along to you when you're a little child. Just going into teenage age, teenage years, and tempt you with, try this pill, try this drug, try this, try it. If you try it, I can take you on such an awesome spiritual high, it'll blow your mind. Try this, or try that. And they come in various forms. Oh, you're such a beautiful gal. You're such a beautiful woman. Why don't you try stripping? Try a strip club. Try working in a strip club. You can make tons of money. Or try doing this film or etc. etc. Because they go and if drawn to its logical conclusion. When the Kenites are done with you, they seriously wreak havoc on you. And you find yourself in a hole and you find yourself in a mess, wondering, what the heck did I do? Because Satan tempts you. Come, can I come in forms of your boyfriend and girlfriend? Of your boyfriend, you start falling in love, and all of a sudden the boyfriend of yours starts talking you into at an early age. Hey, why don't you try, uh, you know, go out and be a prostitute and make me some money, and vice versa. And I think. And I, more and more, you know, and I, I don't know why, I have a fascination of forensic and forensic evidence and, you know, putting the pieces together, mysteries and so forth, and, you know, these serial killers, these madmen, these nut jobs, there's, they are, I'm, almost confident, almost 100% confident, I believe that they are Kenites, bad to the bone. And what normal human being would do such mad ideas, mad things? Even once you become born again, too, all the old Kenites will come along turn into your ex-boyfriends, your ex-girlfriends, your 
ex your friends used to hang out or whatever and try to lead you off the path or lead you astray back into what you used to do. And some of you fall for hook, line, and sinker, and Satan baits you, and then you bite on the bait, and he reels you in, and before you know it, you're down back to the meds. But the good news is that Jesus Christ will always come and find you, and lead you back in the right path, right back on, right path, back into his fold, and clean up your wounds. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And that's exactly what he did. He laid down his life for you so you might have his life and have his life abundantly. Verse 12, he who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolves come in and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolves snatch them and scatter them. This refers to the, referring to the Kenites, the leadership of the Pharisees and Sadducees at, the, at that time. Their motivation is self-interest. Maybe their maybe the Pharisees and Sadducees' interest, because they were they knew that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, but they were Kenites. But they did a good job concealing that of them as shepherds. But they're really they were really uh, you know hired hands and their interest was self-interest. I don't know whatever, what, what it was, maybe it was because it gives them importance, esteem, and probably made a lot of money off of uh, the temple and stuff, because you know later on Jesus Christ knocks over the uh, the money chain money tables in the temple and of course before the Protestant Reformation Luther the Catholic Church was selling indulgences promising life and uh, you have this today you have these Kenites in disguise as shepherd preachers and teachers of the Word of God but their main sole goal is to make money they try to sell you maybe oil, anointed oil, on television. They try to sell you uh, anointed cloths, supposedly. Uh, they try to give you, try to get you to give and give and give and give money, and convince you by giving you, by giving you'll become rich and a millionaire. But who, who's really getting rich? It's those preachers and teachers why the rest of the people who give their money away, their lives are destroyed by that. Some lose their homes, lose their houses, and whatever. Falling back and forth in all these different kinds of movements, counterfeit revival. Because the Kenites are always trying to start counterfeit revivals to create a revival that leads you astray from the truth revival that comes through Christ's resurrected life, coming up with new schemes and ideas, selling you holy water, uh, phony prophecies in the mail, 
that they print out by print out by which they probably print out millions and millions of these fake prophecies uh, in a factory somewhere and they claim to be prophets and they have all these letters written out claiming that they have a word for you and that they're a prophet and all you have to do is give this give me this money and uh, I'll give you a prophecy and etc uh, etc et their motive their motive you know, their motive is, is self interest money Even for uh, you know millions and millions of years, the Catholic Church and the priest and all that kind of stuff, their interests were self-motivation. They liked the power that they got.